Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no holds barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. My advocacy today is on the clamors of separationists from different facets of the country and the arrest of its leaders. Peter is back after a while and is talking on issues of food security in the country. Kunle Lawal wants to explain to us what it means by a democratic coup. Sit back, the panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts with no holds barred after this break. Sunday Boho, Unam Dikano, and the Separatist Movement. So, Chief Sunday Boho has been arrested. This makes it the second separatist leader to be arrested by this government, and this is bad. It is human rights violation. It discredits and disunites the already fragmented nation. As a people, we would not take this sitting down or standing, not even lying down. The Fulanese and their love for power, how can a Fulani man be arousing Igbos and Yorubas? Well, this is the narrative we're made to believe. But is this entirely true? I hear people say Sunday Bo's arrest would not have happened in a civilized nation. And I just did laugh. It'd be like say we never hear of Catalonia separatist movement before Abi. Read about Carles Poigimont. Read about Charles Komi Kudoji and the Western Togoland battle in neighboring Ghana. Many elites and poorly informed middle class talk about Pakistan and India. We refer to the unbundling of USSR to justify our demand for Yoruba nation or Biafra. Have we ever taken time out to read about the journey of these secessionist movements? Do we know the struggle they went through? Is this what we want for Nigerians who are already stressed? Killings, harassment, oppression, violation of human rights, etc. Secession movements is not easy. It never comes easy. Are we ready for this? If you are a secessionist leader and you have the perceived support of your people, be careful because no one really has your back. Like Nnamdi Kanu and Sunday Igboho, you'll be left to hang. Secession is not easy. And in Nigeria's case, is secession what we need? Well, we will discuss that on another day. But for now, let me ask you these questions. Have you heard of Hawaiian Sovereignty Advisory Commission? What about Larry Sisid Kilgore? This, the first, of course, is a commission established to achieve the secession plan of Hawaii. Larry Kilgore, formerly called, famously called Larry Sisid Kilgore, is one of the most popular faces currently fighting for the liberation of Texas from USA. Yes, Texas wants to secede from the USA. Texas is an oil producing state a rich oil state unlike Niger Delta region, yet they want out of America. My point is this. It is not until you are oppressed that you have a right to demand for secession. You have a right to demand for secession wherever, but there are processes and procedures. The government should not oppress the people, and the people should not be seen as challenging the stability of the nation. The first thing is to have the buy-in of the entire region that you want to pull out of a union, a nation, in our case, Nigeria. You need to the buy-in of power brokers of your region. Secession is an intellectual process, not a violent one. Violence makes it gory. Many needless lives are lost. I'm not justifying these brutal acts, but I'm saying it is a universal script that will play out in any country in the world if approached the same way we are. For Nigeria to change, we need to understand the process and address each bit of it tactically, not emotionally. Emotions do not win cases. It empowers the politicians that we all have acts to grind with. It fractionalizes and weakens the masses. God bless Nigeria. Wow, you know, um Kaode says something about processes and procedures, um, intellectual processes, um, ideological procedures. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what is missing. We, I mean, the secessionists, like you said, 
they, 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 they approach this without any laid down processes. There are no procedures. And just before the, <clears throat> we, that we got on this um, program, you know, Kunle was asking something about, so you want to succeed. What's, your, what's the developmental plan for the new nation you want? And, you know, the moment he said that, I just said to myself, I think um, both the secessionists and their supporters are really not ready. Most of the time, it's, um, it's, it's greed. It's um, uh, personal vested interest, yes. you know, trying to play out. But mm -hmm. we define them, use this secession as a, a cover for it. I don't know about uh, Hawaii and the other ones yeah. you, you quoted. But honestly, this, this really calls for sober reflection. On well, um, I'm of the point of view that whenever this session is talk about dividing Nigeria, they divide Nigeria on a parameter that is permissible to them, exactly. but not permissible to the minority units also functioning within them. Mm. So I have the belief that if we divide Nigeria across the three major borders which we are thinking of, we still will have minority groups in the east, in the west, and in yes. the north yes. that will not agree with those composition or units they are planning of to course. form. And one quick thing I always ask, I notice something common. Why is it whenever easterners and north westerners are referring to northerners, they say Fulani? Fulani don't even make up to 40% of the entire population of the north. So I don't even understand what exactly when they talk about Fulani and power. I like the question part Mark you put at the end. Mm. Uh, that's so we think. So really, that's so we think. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, for me, when, when I was putting this piece together, I had to, it was a very lengthy one. I needed to remove so many things mm. just to summarize it. Because at the end of the day, you realize that, yes, I don't have any problem with anybody wanting out. And that's why I give examples of countries. People want out in different countries. In America, Texas, they have all the oil. They have everything. They are rich. They are very I mean, they have everything, yet they want out. But you see, there are processes. Anywhere you rise up against a government, mm. the government, you've given the government a reason to oppress you. And that is what, and no matter, no amount of emotion can stop that. Mm. If you call the UN, call anybody, listen, when the guys, when the, they, they organized a referendum in, in Catalonia, because they wanted, they wanted out, these were lawmakers. Spain, all that came from Spain, they chased after them. I think Carles or, or, or a few of them ran away to Belgium or Netherlands. An international warrant of arrest was issued and they went and brought them back. Mm. They were in prison, but they've been given a pardon, I think sometime in June, after two or three years. So, you see, it is a script that exists. And that's why as youth, as Nigerians, we need to understand these things. If really we want the change. And for me, the question I asked, which I really couldn't address was, is this secession we need? Mm. I would agree, and I always tell my friends that, okay, whether you're Yorubas or Igbos or Awusa, anybody that wants to succeed, you have a right to. But I will support you to succeed if you can prove to me that in your entire region, you are more developed than Nigeria. Mm. Then we all will agree that Nigeria is holding you back. Which, which region in Nigeria is developed? That's the first question. Mm. Is it the north? Where we say they've been holding power for so long, the people are suffering. If you see, I see mm. some of these kidnap cases, you see model schools, and I wonder, this is the model school. Mm. And what is this? Is this the north where we see all the power and all the money is going to? Mm -hmm. In the south, we say we're educated, but we see our development, you're like, we could be better than this. In the east, we see a lot of Aibo guys, they're making money, they're successful, but apart from the beautiful lush houses, how are roads? Mm -hmm. What's the health sector like? So it's not a session we need. We need to first of all get our people, our leaders, regional leaders, to think and act on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Then it will, it will be okay. And I think there's a part we seem to mostly forget. Mm -hmm. Every country has a right to defend its sovereignty True. and its constitution. True. That is first and foremost mm -hmm. to any threat. True. So when you are going to start a secession, if you are not playing on the games or within the parameters of the National That's Assembly, exactly. you are not going to have any normal, peaceful response. Right. Exactly. Because what it is, is that you're a threat to a nation. Yeah. Mm. That's what it simply that, means. That's the very, processes very and true. procedures. Processes if you do it the wrong procedures. way, I mean, you'll be, you'll be hacked down. Don't empower. That's what I was, I was talking about a play, mm. people that are already oppressed. You know, empower mm. who the authorities. The oppressors. You, the oppressors. You cannot, you can't win this battle I, anyway. I think, I think you're right. And like you rightly said, uh, emotions don't win cases. Mm -hmm. Very... 
very um, key phrase there. You know, Kunle, Kunle brought up something that I actually have been, I've always believed. So when you say you want to separate the East, you know, you talked about the three regional yeah. lines. They are no longer three. Mm. You know, I don't understand. Mm. You know, in those days, we used to say middle belt. Mm. Yes. We don't call a Delta man a middle belt again. South that's South has become a very strong force. Yes. You don't come like <laughs> that's, come that's like true. South South to, that's true. The, the, to the East or the East. Exactly. So I think the, 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 the line border lines have become polarized right now. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about East, East is not what it used to be 20 years ago. True. I don't know about the North. I don't know about, but I know the East. You can call it the the middle is there's no middle belt again. They've become a big true um uh, bold. They call us themselves. Yeah. They've become so mighty, so they've mighty become power belt. brokers. They have become power brokers. Yes. So you can't call them middle belts. They are not the minority again. Mm. Mm. Well, we'll keep talking. Yeah. And uh, we pray that of course we uh we we, we ask for um, what's it called? That uh, the rights of those that have been arrested should not be trampled on. Absolutely. Fair uh, uh, just, uh, justice for them, and that is very key. Peter is next. He's giving us a lecture on food crisis in Nigeria. <laughs> Insecurity and food crisis in Nigeria. Um, arable land, which is um, defined as a percentage of land area um, in Nigeria as of 2016, is reported as at 37.33 percent. One of the cardinal campaign objectives of the Buhari-led government is tackling insecurity. However, despite claims by federal authorities of increased security measures, an atmosphere of insecurity still lingers. Rising cases of banditry, kidnapping, headsmen clashes, open grazing becoming a hot debatable issue abound with huge amount of ransom being paid. This is excluding PTSD, which is the post-traumatic stress disorder that has suffered, that's been suffered by victims, according to um, opposition. There's a huge value chain of opportunities explored by beneficiaries of the rots in the system. According to a Premium Times report, a total of 4.62 trillion naira has been allocated to the federal security sector in the past five years, despite claims by the Nigeria Security Forces that they are being underfunded. The recent um, NSAS protest against police br uh, brutality in the country led to the discovery and the mass looting of warehouses filled with food, food items meant to ameliorate food insecurity in the nation. The looting revealing Nigeria's pervasive poverty and food insecurity. Food insecurity in Nigeria is continuously being aggravated by a myriad of factors, including insecurity and most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. About 9 out of 10 Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet. Nigeria has the second highest burden of stunted children across the globe, and millions of children suffer from acute malnutrition. About 3.7 million Nigerians or people across um, 16 states are, um, are food insecure. Other factors driving um, food crisis include civil conflicts, large-scale displacements, rising food prices, um, climate change, pop uh, population growth, natural resources degradation, etc. Propelled by desertification, insecurity, and the loss of grazing land um, to expand a settlement, the southward um, migration of Nigerians, headsmen, is causing um, a lot of violent competition over land with local farmers. In some communities, um, um, communities ha have had to pay bandits before they could harvest farm produce. Rising conflicts between herdsmen and farmers in the country is already six times um, deadlier in 2018 than Boko Haram's insurgency. Food supply to some parts of the um, south was cut off due to agitation from aggrieved Fulani herdsmen. Tens of thousands have been um, forcefully displaced. Crops and livestock worth billions of naira destroyed. 
at great cost to local and um, state economies. To stop the bloodshed, the federal government should bolster security for farmers and headsmen. Um, should, they should end impunity for um, assailants, implement conflict resolution mechanisms, and the hasten livestock um, sector reforms. It should also elaborate the new National Livestock Transformation Plan and the commence implementation of same. States should also become um, creative in diversification of IGR. It is worth mentioning that um, embracing innovation is also becoming imperative. Traditional methods like bush um, following, um, rotational farming, gray, um, grafting, and the agro um, forestry is being replaced by vertical farming, the drones and the bees, the poly house, poly tunnel farming, artificial intelligence, internet of things and the automation, as well as robotics amongst others. With um, fluctuation in global oil prices, Nigeria can diversify its earnings by making agriculture attractive through ensuring safety of farmers. If the United States can rank top by volume of exports, um, which is $72 billion, then Nigeria can replicate same. Wow. You know, you know whenever we talk about these matters on um, food and insecurity, it always comes down to the top point. Nigeria as a country does not even know how many Nigerians it hopes to feed. No computer data, no computer data of the entire people in the we are country. Told we, are, we are over 200 million people. We are not sure of how Estimates, many and how many were. We are not sure. And then secondly, we have ignored something. The desertification of the upper part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. that's Zampara, Katsina, Borno, it is causing an issue. Yeah. Upon the desertification, naturally man moves towards water. So taking away the desertification, let me add another bigger problem. Our borders are insecure. Mm. So I, we are in a quagmire of issues. If we, that we, if we do not get right as a country, which other simple countries have gotten right, we just might be able to never solve our insecurity and food insecurity. Uh, we never might solve our insecurity and food insecurity. Food I think. And, and you see, what, what you're saying now, someone, I was with someone yesterday who made a statement, and the person said, listen, we're complaining about the rising cost of tomatoes in the market. They said, he went to, it was a lady with her husband, they went to the mall and one of the supermarkets, and they realized that about, he said all, oh, like I assume it's not all, Ma majority of the tomato paste that they saw there were all from Nigeria. Now the question is this, with the advent of these companies being set up to produce tomato paste, have we deliberately increased the amounts of tomatoes that are produced in the north? Mm. Because now these people will be taking a chunk of the same tomatoes that are supposed to circulate around Nigeria to produce tomato pastes, sell the same tomato paste to us, whereas we are left with a smaller quantity than we normally would. Mm -hmm. And we know the, 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 the theory of uh, economics, buying and selling. And, uh, demand uh, and you, supply. You know, demand and supply, yeah. thank you. So, of course, that will increase. I think we're not strategic enough in, in the way we address food as a security in Nigeria. Someone made a statement, a colleague made a statement about South Africa. I said, every year, the people wait on government to hear government's policies before the strike, especially after an election, because they know that is the ne next big thing. That's the next way to make money. Yes, government came in and said they want to do a Greek, and not just this government. Even before then, uh, we know what uh, Mr. Adeshino did. How many of us have plugged into a Greek? Now we're complaining about the basins that they want to go discover oil in the north as if blah, blah, blah. And I say, fine. Number one, that's the story for another day. The money will not be given to the state government. It will be given to NNPC or whoever to explore. Mm. And it will be shared the normal way of old, whatever that is. Now, the truth is, the people, quote unquote, in the north often look for a way to resolve their problems. We know, I mean, I'm shocked that we have, we've had this headsman crisis in so many years. And the question is, how many state governors in the South have decided that, you know what, let's start producing an amount of rice. Let's start producing an amount of yam. Let's start feeding ourselves in the South so that if, if this thing worsens, not just that we're self-sufficient, but we can even sell food to the North to help them out because they cannot create food. We're putting everything back 
on the federal government, which they, they should take the blame, no big deal. But what are we doing as a people to make sure that we have food to eat? I, I think um, uh, everything has been politicized um, to a very large extent because you just raised a very valid point. We've been, there's been headsman crisis for a very long time. It just became, very, I don't even know what now made it, brought it to the front burner, but it's always been there. Yes. Um, we've always had cases of people being attacked um, in their farms. We've mm -hmm. had cases of um, um, cows moving into farms mm -hmm. and eating things. Eating, yeah. But you see, because everything is about the politics, everything, um, the, the, the advent, the oil boom, <laughs> completely destroyed our capacity to think. Yeah, it shut us down. We, we hibernated. We hibernated. If at all we did not shut down, we hibernated. <laughs> um, so we have a minister for agriculture. Mm -hmm. And without putting blames, pointing fingers, but the question is, which goes back to that same question, what's your developmental plan? Mm -hmm. Femi Additional opened our eyes to a lot, a of, lot things, of things. A lot of things. Cassava bread. As a matter of fact, with when you listen to Femi Adeshino, you will uh, understand. No, no, uh, Akin Umi Adeshino. Akin Umi Adeshino, uh, sorry. Yeah. Akin Umi Adeshino. Femi Adeshino is the uh, person of worries. I'm, I'm sorry. Even <laughs> Femi Adeshino. Well, you know where you were talking. If, if, you notice my eyes were going. Even Femi listening to me. Are you referring to you? So, am I this? No, I'm not going to I'm not talking about you, sir. So, Akin Umi Adeshino opened our eyes to huge opportunity in the agro sector. Um... And you will be shocked how many billions of Naira has been voted for this. Hmm. That information is not public. Because, guess what, Karade? If the information is made public, uh, it's made available. If the process of the dissemination of that money is not through government, if it was through independent institutions hmm. that also exist, I am sure my village in Ohosra produces rice i recall i recall very well at a time when i was there they would go to rice farm they will produce rice when you hear uh, about rice mm. i we i'm from ebony state and my village produces rice but the process of that production is still is too a cage to feed the the clan to meet our demands to yes. meet that our demand why can't we move in automation there why can't they move a factory there but it can be done because there is someone who represents us who will rather keep that conversation at the state house of assembly or federal house you know the, there was a one time minister of agriculture and I remember he really celebrated that we started exporting cocoa. <laughs> no, it's, oh, cocoa, yeah, okay, it's okay. impressive that we're exporting yeah. cocoa, but I'll give you the numbers. We've always been doing it. No, I'll give, you, yeah. I'll give you the numbers. As of 20, this was 2016. As of 2016, um, we're, we're making as much as $3 billion from, from our cocoa. exports in cocoa. On cocoa wow. Okay. But now, the na na normal Nigerian will say impressive, but we need to pay attention to something. Our imports of cocoa derivatives, mm. which are cocoa, uh, chocolates, chocolates all uh, the whatever, things that they was at $9.6 billion, Whoa. meaning Nigeria is running at a deficit it of $6.3 billion. $6. Mm. $6. billion. Yeah. When, you are, when you have the raw material, what is your plan for processing? And now mm. this processing deficiency is what Nigeria can feed itself. I Absolutely. don't have a doubt about Absolutely. that. I've traveled all across Nigeria. I've been to every state. Nigeria can feed itself. Nigeria's problem is storage and uh, processing. Processing and storage. Yeah. Those are don't have. And, no, and there's one other thing, transportation. A lot of these mm. things, they, just, they are there for so long, bringing them down here. Because by the time you look at the, the cost, mm -hmm. the variance in the pricing from the village or wherever it is coming down to the city, and even within the city, from the amount of it's something is sold in Ikorodu is different from the amount is sold in probably Orile or somewhere in Badagri. True. Why? It's the same Lagos. But they are, and the amount is not just little 100 or 200. At times, as much as 500, 600. Mm. And I always tell them, there are, there are no headsmen between Ikorodu and Badagri. Ah, no. So you cannot blame they, headsmen no, for that. No, no, Kayo, they, they are headsmen. They are headsmen <laughs> in uniforms. No, no, no. You know, they, in said, uniforms. They, <laughs> they are headsmen are now collecting something. That's what I'm saying. They are headsmen <laughs> in uniforms. I mean, you know, I have a friend from Benue State. Mm. Her name is Mimi, and Mimi will tell you that 
Mimi will travel to her village yeah. and she will send pictures and she will say, this big yam you are seeing is less than 1,000 naira. And when you see the big yam, and she will tell you that that yam, yam is probably 400 naira in her village. She will bring a basket of tomatoes and tell you this is 1,200 1, 1, naira. That same basket goes for 6,000 when it arrives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was in, I was in Joss before, before I came oh, here. Okay. You know I don't live in Lagos. Uh -huh. I'm always bragging about that. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, I was in Joss and the basket of tomatoes there is 800. It's even less than oh, this thing. But what happens? And I sent to my sister-in-law sister and my wife was apparently in Lagos at the time. I sent to them and transporting it and if you divide it, I was wondering, I said, why is tomato that expensive in Lagos? If I decided to start my, my, uh, transporting tomatoes mm -hmm. up and down, I'll make a lot of money. But I'll tell you what Nigeria ignored the most, which is the bane of our problems with insecurity right now. You see, the troubles in sub-Saharan Africa, you asked the question, you said, yeah. how did it move to the front burner? Mm. The troubles in sub-Saharan Africa, so when Libya was breaking down, Sudan was causing havoc, mm. more guns were coming into the system in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria, as usual, didn't care. We're spending money on oil. Mm. Uh, National Assembly was buying new cars. We refused to secure our borders. What happened is those guns and those borders mm. trickled down. Mm. Remember that our politicians hired some of these people for their little vendettas. Let me not only mm. put place my hands on the politicians alone. Our small community referral fights, and I'm not going to mention mm. who bass or who. We hired a few of these gun criminals from outside mm. to fight our wars. Sure. And everybody's wondering all of a sudden, how the hell did they get here? Yeah. Everybody is not your business. Really? And you see, like what you're mm. saying is so apt that now listen, I, I always we spend we don't understand and we don't take our time to really study about security. If we did, we realize that Nigeria hasn't done anything. Now, Egypt doesn't have insurrection. South Africa doesn't have insurrection. Algeria doesn't have insurrection. But in terms of GDP, they spend more on securing and their military than Nigeria, who is suffering mm. and all round does. We spend less than, I think, 0.5% or 0.6%. I think Egypt spends, South Africa spends around 0 0.9, Egypt 1.2 or 1.6, uh, uh, Algeria is it 2 or whatever of their, of their budget. And their budget, let's face the facts, most likely will be bigger than Nigeria's budget. So in terms of the actual amount, they spend way more on their military every single year than we, Nigerians, who are confronted, confronted with, with insurrection across board from the northern part mm. to the southern part. And that is military, not to talk of the interior mm. security. I mean, military, uh, the police and blah, blah, blah. We're spending a lot, yes. And I think one of the challenges people are having is interaction, explanation on where this money is going and how it's being exactly. done. But the cost of funding the military is no joke. I was, there was this report that came out some years ago that said a fully kit American soldier I mean, at war, the war from maybe in Afghanistan or so. I, I'm not sure. I need to confirm that. Maybe it's worth around, is it 40000 or $30,000? Fully wow. kits, like standing full soldier ready for battle. Wow. And that, that amount, though, if you're not sure, it will come back that same way. Mm. Maybe it will depreciate to around twenty or ten or 5000 And when it's going into... So funding the military mm. is heavy. And we're, when we say... And I, when I look at Nigerian security, I laugh because, listen... All, most of our expenses are going to the military. The civil defense service, we're supposed to be the front line, first line of call in the area and all that. We're not spending enough on them. Mm. Even look at their, their uniform, it's tattered. The police, we're not spending on them. And they're supposed to be the human, have the human face, be able to interact with you. So these people are hungry. We're not spending yet on security. Mm. You know, so, Kyle, yeah. I tried to bring out one point. Mm. Spending on our military mm. is like securing, let me base, bring it down to base, it's like securing an entire estate. Spending on your police is like putting burglar proof on your house. Mm. That's to tell okay. you the efficiency okay. we have in Nigeria. Now, imagine we have, we're t we approximately give or take, as we call ourselves, 200 million, mm. our usual number. How many people do we have in our police force? Less than 500,000. Of those less than 500,000, 250,000 are guarding vital assets, be it banks, CBN, ETC, then, another, then and politicians. Mm. Then you have 250,000 policing 200 million people. Mm. UN is one policeman to mm. 10 in a best situation. 
1 to 10. Hmm. Nigeria has 1 to 10,000. One policeman to 10,000. How are you going to secure 10,000 people hmm. as one policeman? One policeman. It is, if we like, let's spend <laughs> $500 billion. As on long the as that is, the, that is the amount of people we have, mm -hmm. it's not going to be mm -hmm. possible to police. Yeah. Yeah. We always mention state policing or whatever. I always, I always come up and I say, why do you talk about state police? You build from the ground up, not from the top down. So if you are going to be looking at anything, ethnic policing, if you grow up in a locality, let's say you, let me give an example, let's say you grew up in Etiosa from mm. when you were a child. If you join the police at age 20, there's nothing that is going on in Etiosa that you, that you will not know. Mm. You know the bad boys. You, if they steal TV, you know, we, you can count who exactly. probably did it. Exactly. But you can now employ That's somebody from, from a area. degree mm. to come to, come to Lekki and expect him to handle, it doesn't work doesn't that way. Work, yeah. So instead of us clamoring, and I blame the middle class for this, for the so-called fictitious state police with state governors, ordinary small state, uh, state uh, elections board that we're giving them, no rival party can win elections, mm. state police you want to give them, <laughs> <laughs> the emperors of states. <laughs> so in my position, we should go actually be clamoring for local government police mm. in the hands of local government chairmen that we can hold responsible. Let's yeah. also remember that local governments are not immune. That's the local government oh, chairman okay. is not immune. Knew that. They don't have immunity. Really? Ah, if they cross you, ah, you didn't know. Ah, no, let no, me no, tell no, you too. No. So you're a TOSA chairman, you're Suru Leri. You know, anytime you yeah. just feel they've stolen one money, carry them to court. They don't have immunity. Oh, <laughs> that's good news. <laughs> very good. Do I start Thank you, Kule. <laughs> they should not start chasing me. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> even, even, even talking about security and delving back into the food and, and uh, bits. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the reasons, in my view, that we're not really transforming in uh, food is because the youth are not fully active. The banking sector, where it is today, is done by the youth. Movies, entertainment is done by youth. Any active sector in Nigeria today is the youth. I think it's time for the youth to get involved in food mm. and security. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Up next is Kule Lawal. Stay with us. A democratic coup. As mostly feared from our military history, when the coup is mentioned, it's usually related with treason and overthrow of government, scary things happening to our economics. Well, fortunately, in democracy, it provides, as allowed within the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to unseat some elected officers without waiting till when their terms are over. These are perfectly constitutional, legal, and endorsed to be tried in your constituency as provided by the Constitution. The basis of a democracy, as the concept began, was on representative governance and has its foundation in the legislature, which of course comprises of the State House of Assembly, which is in your state, the Federal House of Representatives, the Green Chambers, the Senate, the Red Chambers, and they are charged with responsibility of oversight on the executive as the, one of their first functions. The second function will be amendment and law creation. At this juncture, I would like to you to note that constituency projects are not within their job description and can be considered as nothing else but an anomaly without constitutional backing. The legislature are also tasked with the power to impeach an executive, that is, a governor or a president. But what goes on when you feel underrepresented? And what is key to your rep re representation is lost in political translation. Members of the legislature, legislature can be recalled and here's how to go about it. Step one, identify the constituency which you are unhappy with and representative you are unhappy with within the legislative government and find out how many total votes were cast in the election that brought the representative to power. 
two, get 50% plus one signature at least and PVC numbers. And please note, INEC only accepts this in manual form. Three, send the petition to INEC, which will be verified, and a referendum as regards the ref representative's position will be placed in that constituency in the next 90 days. Four, if the representative loses the referendum, the seat will now be lost and INEC will declare the seat vacant and conduct a fresh election in 90 days. It looks like this can't be done, which is most of the time what we say when the middle class don't want to make a move to repair the country. I will tell you the truth. Do you want to know the opportunity cost of that? I'll tell you the opportunity cost. The present electoral act we spent so many talks over and, and it has hurt us to see that it seems our own independent electoral commission is now going to be a puppet in the hands of many different other uh, positions within governance. There is poor oversight of the executive and we watch as state governors push up high budgets, the presidency ignores a heightened insecurity and worst of all, laws that repeal basic freedoms like speech and movement of people in the, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You can do more than a hashtag against a representative you dislike. You can stand your ground or fall and watch the country bow to anything. Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, clap. Nobody, nobody claps. <laughs> Thank you for the democratic call. Oh, let's see. I mean, that's, that's very, um, very apt mm. and um, Quite honestly, I think there's so much we don't know in this country. I even sitting here, I'm wondering, is it this simple? But it's not. It's made to. So when you say constitu constitu um, uh, constituency project, is not part of because that's the major thing these guys go there mm -hmm. to sell. No. No, I, it, I'm telling you, when we find people there, we are waiting for the constituency project to be executed. So it's a case of, okay, whose constituency pro uh, uh, project is better done or bigger? So if it is outside of their purview, who, who should be charged with the constituency projects, please? I, I think, okay. okay, I think before you come in as the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, what's it called? The oracle in this part. <laughs> <laughs> now, my view, I think we are, Nigeria as a country is in a fix in the sense that there is what the constitution says hmm. and there are laws that have been passed by the National Assembly which does not amount to an amendment of the constitution. You know, over the years, some things have been added in the constitution, but there are some things that take place in the, in the National Assembly that are not necessarily part of a new constitution or an amendment to the constitution that are just probably, I don't know if to call them bylaws or stuff that just happened within them. I think that's where this falls. And then the question is, will it be illegal for them to take it on or will it not be? And that I think is always a challenge in Nigeria. We, you see, we are always too scared to approach the courts. Mm. There are some things, I like what PDP is doing now, taking uh, materially to court. I love it. I, we need, we need a, a solution to that. Yes, we know that we're, there's a law that says if a party is going through, uh, it's fractionalized, you can bow out and all that. But let, let's, let's try the courts. We don't. We need to try the courts. We need to go to court over cases like, okay, like the, the where, where was I the other day that I heard about uh, health, um, birth and death? now being a federal issue, yeah, where I mean. some of this, you need to just go to court, okay, the constitution says uh, primary health is responsibility of local government and the state, I believe, and now we're having primary health in the federal and all that. Let's try this. Do they have a right to do that? You're not fighting, and such things, you realize that government will not go against you because you're not fighting anything that touches them, I mean, to the core. You're only looking at the processes and the systems, and these things are the things we don't do that allow everybody to do whatever we want in court. But going to the court is not a, is not a cheap... When you say PDP, 
drag the government to court. It's an institution, it's a body. My brother, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's too scary going to the courts, and yeah. I want us to uh, uh, look at it from the generic point. That's the thing. Scary see, that that word you said is the problem. Scary. Scary. It's not as scary. It's, okay, for example, in Nigeria, if you have cases, there are people that do pro bono. Okay. In Nigeria. I mean, lawyers. Uh, lawyers. Okay. There, are, there is even the national, um, there's a, oh, what's this called? Um, act, um, legal aid. I don't, I don't know if yes, it's called legal, legal aid, right? Legal yeah. Aid. Is it a government? Is it government? Uh, stuff? Why would I go to government to... No, I'm, no I'm talking about normal... Independent bodies... Exactly. No, I'm talking can... about normal uh, issues. Now, if you're able to rally around, like, uh, um, what's it called? Um, all these things we sign online. That we say we're signing petitions, petitions mm -hmm. and stuff. You can rally up people like Sarah okay. and other institutions. See, let's push this and try. Thank you and for you this. will get the support. You, you said something about, you know, Kunle, in Kunle's speech, mm. Kunle said something about when you, are, when you want to recall a rep. Mm -hmm. And he said, so you get um, a, a petition Pet signed, yeah, like yeah, 50% yeah, yeah. of that. But he said, INEC will not want that electronic. They Ele want it physical. Of that course. Is, fraud. That is where the scam comes in. Not why necessarily. Is, so, so why is why is INEC? Because the moment INEC says it has to be physical, then it cuts off a demography. Let me explain something. If that is going to stop you, do you know what the backlash of not doing that is? Is what you have now in the National Assembly. You asked me a question, constituency projects. For once, anyway, it's been a long time so I can talk about it. Constituency project came into Nigeria when Obasanjo was looking for third term. It's a direct infringement on the operations of the local government and its functions directly. Mm. There is no legislature in the world that does projects. US, UK, Zimbabwe, Congo, Ghana, Egypt. They don't do projects. Your work in the National Assembly is oversight. First, oversight on the executive. Second, amendment of laws. I'm making laws, yeah. Between two, 1999 and 2021, the U.S. Senate and its legislative arm have amended about approximately four, over 4,200 laws. Do you know where your country is on that? I don't need to tell you. you. An Electoral Act of 1999, okay, after a little touch up and brush up in 2014 to amend for card readers, mm. uh, we're just facing it. Are they really doing what they're supposed to do? Let me tell you that Nigerian lawmakers earn over $400,000 per annum. That is higher. That is more than 20 times higher than those in the US. I don't want to 20 tell you. 20 times? Yes. Mm. The US senator earns about approximately $40,000 a year. We, we earn about $400,000 and still infringing with that word constituency projects. The first handshake of democracy to the people is it's the local, local government. government. Yeah. Of course. If you take the functions of that, how can you deliver democracy to, to the people? That is direct infringement of an arm. Remember, state governments are of the wet dream that they are on top of the local government. No. Local governments and this is a separate tier of government, like you are state, federal, yeah. local. They are not under the state government. But state governments have even grown wings enough to begin to, to fire elected, mm. duly elected Chair. chairman. Mm. Mm. Or your case in example. So uh, that's uh, dismissal of the of the chairman state, of the local government. Is it constitutional? State, state governments do not have the power. So how did that happen and nobody challenged it? So that's why I'm saying. No, and, and that's what I'm saying. The see, Supreme Court has reinstated them. In other states, the Supreme Court has... The governor does not have jurisdiction. No, you see? And why did okay. the Supreme Court reinstate them? Somebody challenged it? Challenged it, it yes. You see, when you don't challenge, when, it was, when you don't it try... Was, it was not within the administration that... Um, fired them. No, but that's the, that's the thing. If they had been challenged during the administration of president that fired them, they would have been reinstated. Mm. And that's what we say. There. See, we, we, there's so much laxity in our system. Let it be. They because we hear. do something, so just, don't uh, make them constitutional. constitutional right, yeah. Hmm. So, like state governors, state governors taking, pilfering into local government funds. funds. It's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Money is supposed to flow from federal government directly to local government. But state governors do it and we're like, 
Okay. But it's not supposed to happen. Their money is not supposed to pass through any mm -hmm. fictitious Ministry of Intergovernmental Affairs, yeah. in quotes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you know why that will money. continue? It will continue the same reason we cannot get the 50% plus one. Because you see, you can only get 50% plus one when you have voted. When you are absent from the vote. No, no, no. No, no, hold on, I'm, I'm coming. When you are absent from the vote, I'm, you, you get where I'm going when I finish mm -hmm. this point. Your position is not absent. It is you, the voter, that is absent. Somebody will vote for you, and that's what you call rigging. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, maybe in a, a, constituency, a constituency where you have about 400,000 people, you see about 250,000 people that voted. In actual sense, the people that came out to vote were like 50,000 or 30,000. Mm -hmm. So when you want to call somebody back, once the 50,000 go and sign, where are you going to get the other people that came to vote? Mm -hmm. wait, so how can you call them? Wait, back? but I'm going to point out something. You know, now, this democratic coup, why it's really interesting in Nigeria to even attempt. Mm -hmm. We know most of us are looking at it at the federal level. Let's come home maybe to be State House of Assembly. Thank you. Now, Nigerians, you know that we do not... State House of Assembly elections uh, uh, get as poor as 13% of total voter percentage. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to use... I don't want to pinpoint anybody. But there's one I was aware of somewhere around Mushi. I didn't call anybody's name. <laughs> and she got into power. Anybody can assume any who I'm talking about. She got in power with approximately uh, the total votes were about 37,000. Hmm. Meaning, if you want to take her out of office, you need just Maybe. a little over, give or take. About uh, 14, no, not 14, about 19. 19,000, yeah, 19,500. Yeah, well, let's say anything mm -hmm. above that. So 19,500 signatures, and you've removed the state house of one. If you remove one, everybody will, everybody will fall in line. But you know what's even more, and what's even mm. closer home is that, I like what you said, the local government, the states, the federal, and uh, I mean the mm. National mm. Assembly. But what about councillors? You know, councillors mm. also play the role of, quote unquote, there's an assembly in the local government. They are the legislature of the exactly. local government. They are. So they play that they role. Can take out but we channel. ignore them. Yeah, so, so that's why, the, why are they very Because silent? you haven't voted for no, them. You know the problem? One, I can tell you averagely across the 36 states of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and because of my work with the Electoral College, councillors do not even know their job description. And it gets so bad. They don't know their job description. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't have an idea of what they're supposed to be doing, which is a massive problem. Then second, local government chairmen do not even know what councillors are supposed to do. I can tell you that as far as it goes up, even some SA politics to a governor do not understand that the legislature and the and the and the the council are legislature and the yeah, chairman are uh, executive. executive. They don't. Are you kidding me? I'm no, I won't be surprised if many governors know. How many so the thing That's is the thing. is it why is this information who is who is you know like budget it's does you know they take the, that big yeah, complicated and budget break and they're breaking down. down who is breaking down electoral laws and interpretation to the masses that's what we don't have well <laughs> i'll say the electoral college is trying electoral of course, college does not that you to. see honestly do you know that it was I, I feel very embarrassed saying this on the on the television but it was a flyer i saw of you doing a program that i even knew that electoral college existed. actually exists we are not a government body. Eh? We are not a government no, body. No, I'm only saying mm. that um, the, 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 the information... So if there is an electoral college that is doing all of that, it's not yet very popular. People need to it's know It's not it. widespread. It's not widespread. People yeah. need to know it. I know budget it. As in I, can, I know where to go to. to it, once federal government reads budget, typically, you know, it's, not, it's very vague. Budget it has become the go-to place. Yeah. Mm. Maybe electoral college needs to we position. We just started. We just started. Yeah. We are less than two years old. We are about two years old. Oh, so yes. with time, we will get there. Mm. Budget, I knew when budget started. And of course, it took budget. them seven, six years to get down oh, the right, line. Okay. So I, I think the, get the electoral college is very much welcome. And please, you people, because this information needs to be public. Yeah. I must tell you that when Nigerians have full information about something, they, they will act go, better. They, they will act. Mm. But you know what? You know what? While we're waiting for electoral college, and this is where I challenge you that listen, the same way we we'll look for any information about Jay Z, let's use the internet and just search. It's, it's like when people talk of uh, police, 
uh, we need state police. I believe we need state police. I believe we need community police. I believe we need to break down police. However, do you even know that the way the police is, we are not using it. We are not implementing it fully. Do you know that as much as, yes, we say the police reports to the IG and everything, if you are in the States, it is difficult, quote-unquote, unquote, for you to be controlled. And it's been proven, even in this uh, dis uh, dispensation. When, yeah, yeah, when these guys came to Rivers and approached Wiki, um, what was his name, uh, uh, Amechi, when their convoy met, the one coming from Federal had to calm down for the one in the States. You see, there are so many things online that you can search, but we don't look for it. We can talk on and on and on. No, 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 you know, no, 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 the show has to end. Okay. So, as, as usual, on the, on the Advocates, it's always an interesting conversation. That's all we have time for today on The Advocate. Join us again next week. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station, and let's keep advocating for a better society. Ciao. Yeah.